Constant wars and armed conflicts forced many ancient peoples to build great walls to protect their cities from outside threats. Some kingdoms put all their trust in the strength of their walls and created true, almost impregnable fortresses. But there were also those who preferred to live freely on the plains, far from the restrictions imposed by the urban lifestyle. The Scythians lived mainly as nomadic horsemen and developed a warrior culture based on the strength of their warriors and tribal leaders. Of Iranian origin, the Scythians inhabited the steppes of a vast region where Ukraine, Russia, Siberia, and Mongolia are located today. The Scythians also inhabited lands near India and China. The Greek historian Herodotus is credited with giving the name Scythians to the steppe people, as well as to the region where they lived, long called Scythia. The name derives from the Greek word skolotoi, which can be translated as archer or bowman. Since the Scythians were a nomadic people and lived divided into many tribes occupying such a large area, the cultural characteristics of the Scythians could vary greatly, and certainly each tribe had its own customs influenced by the region in which it lived. The Assyrians called them Isquizai and reported that the Scythians came from the north around 700 BC when they waged war against the Sumerians who inhabited the northern Caucasus region. After defeating the Sumerians and driving them out to the region, the Scythians settled north of the Black Sea, near the borders of the Median Empire. The Scythians did not build villages or cities. Being nomads, they lived in tents and made large camps on the steppes. Their main source of food was their herds of goats, sheep, and horses. These animals provided milk, meat, bones, and hides to survive the harsh life on the steppes. The tribe searched for areas where there was a good grazing land for their herds. After two or three months, the natural resources of the land were exhausted. Then it was time to move to a new area, and this cycle repeated every year. The same way of life can be observed among other peoples who lived long after the Scythians, for example, the Huns and the Mongols. The Scythians were expert horsemen and archers, and had a reputation for being savage and sadistic on the battlefield. They showed no mercy to their enemies and rarely took prisoners, preferring to torture and execute captured enemies. The Scythians wore colorful and elaborate clothing and pointed hats made of leather or wool. In battle, they wore a style of cuirass that was innovative for the time, made of hardened leather and covered with small iron and bronze plates. This type of armor guaranteed good protection without carrying excessive weight, improving the mobility of the horse and rider. Commanders or richer warriors also equipped their horses with this kind of armor. The bows used by the Scythians were short and light, easy to carry and handle on horseback. Despite their size, these bows were powerful and could shoot at a distance of 500 meters. The Scythians are credited with inventing the saddle and harness for horses, something that would change the history of chivalry around the world. The Scythians also used ropes to tie down enemies on foot or horseback, a great way to immobilize the enemy and keep a safe distance. The Scythians spent so much time mounted on horses that there is a theory that the centaurs of Greek mythology are a representation of the Scythians, half man, half horse. One of the major highlights of Scythian culture was the custom of making beautiful tattoos on their bodies, most of which depicted sacred animals or fighting animals. Mummies found in Siberia still preserve incredibly refined designs with a unique style. The Scythians also painted their faces for battle, as can be seen on death masks. All these features made the Scythians formidable warriors whose fame was known throughout the Iron Age. They fought against the Greeks, Celts, Medians, and Persians, and are credited with the fall of the Median Empire. The Scythians invaded the Median territories by plundering villages and cities, which paved the way for the Persians to rise and form the Achaemenid Empire. But other people shared with the Scythians a reputation for being deadly in the use of bows and horseback. They were known as the Amazon Warriors. The Amazons became known through Greek sagas, especially in the Twelve Labors of Hercules, where the mythological hero has the task of acquiring a beautiful bejeweled belt that belonged to Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons. The Amazons were described by the Greeks as fierce and strong women, able to fight on par with the best male warriors. 
But the truth is that the Amazons did not belong to the Greek people. Instead, they are associated with the Scythian culture. The origin of the Amazon warriors is uncertain, but it seems that over the centuries they migrated from one region to another and lived for a time in Anatolia, where they joined the Trojans in the fight against the Mycenaean Greeks in the famous Trojan War. Later, they migrated to Scythia and settled in what is now Ukraine. The name Amazon comes from Hamazan and probably derives from the ancient Babylonian or Persian language. Herodotus called them Androctones, which means slayers of men. When they arrived in Scythia, the Amazons and Scythians developed a good relationship as they shared a nomadic culture with many similarities. According to Herodotus, Amazon women agreed to marry Scythian men, but only if they retained the right to be warriors and fight. The Scythians were brutal and numerous warriors, so the Amazons likely pursued an alliance with them instead of trying to take their territories by force, which would certainly have led to a bloodbath. This union gave rise to the Sarmatian clan, a people that would grow strong over time and whose characteristic was the freedom of its women in society ruled by queens from the Amazon lineage. During archaeological excavations, skeletons of women were found in Sarmatian tombs. What attracted the attention of researchers was that many were buried with weapons and armor, and some had battle wounds on their bones. The Scythians did not possess any form of writing. Unfortunately, they left no written records about their people. Much of what is known about them comes from archaeological finds and graves. The Scythians buried their kings in artificial burial mounds called kurgans. In many cases, the dead were given to wild animals, in a custom known as celestial burial. The religion practiced by the Scythians remains nameless and little is known about it. Herodotus tells us that the Scythians worshipped a pantheon of seven gods and goddesses, and that they believed in the spirits of nature, which often came into the world in the form of animals. For the Scythians, the world was divided into the realm of birds, which were part of the heavenly world, the realm of the herbivores, which was largely the earthly world, and the realm of carnivores, which was the part of the subterranean world, as these brought death to other living creatures. The Scythians worshipped deer in particular. They depicted these animals on many gold coins and decorated their horses to look like deer. Human sacrifice was also common, including that of prisoners of war, and there is evidence of the custom of cannibalism among the Scythians. To be captured by them meant to be certain of a dreadful death. The Scythians did not build temples, but they left stone sculptures of warriors throughout almost the entire region they inhabited. According to Herodotus, the Scythians used sadistic customs, like using the skull of an enemy as a cup to drink wine and fermented milk. They also used to inflict wounds on themselves when they were mourning to show that they were grieving for the death of a loved one. All these characteristics clearly explain why other peoples such as the Greeks and Persians fear the Scythians. From the point of view of people who prided themselves on being civilized, the Scythians were bloodthirsty and brutal barbarians. Many Scythian warriors and Amazons served as mercenaries in different nations, working for the most powerful nations of their time. They also traded with many different cultures, which allowed them to develop an artistic style filled with Greek, Egyptian, Persian, and Chinese references. They were particularly skilled in working with gold. The quality and precision of their work were unraveled in the ancient world and would be difficult to replicate today, even with modern tools. Around 300 BC, the Scythians simply disappeared from the face of the earth this is an event that historians to this day cannot explain. The Scythian culture simply vanished. It is not known for sure if there was a war between the tribes or factors such as climate change that made survival on the plains difficult, but the fact is that the Scythians dispersed. The Sarmatian clan continued to live in the area and developed, but their culture changed a lot due to the influences of Greek culture. The Scythians are not considered an empire because they did not build cities and were not organized under a single leadership, but if they had, they would have been incredibly powerful. 
a people that was able to live off the land and strike fear into the most powerful empires of their time came to an end. Despite their mysterious demise, the Scythians left their mark on history.